This is Morgan Hazelwood, back again with more writing tips and writerly musings. Today, I'm here to share with you my YouTube survival guide. Well, not really mine. I'm just sharing notes. I know, I know, I'm a writer blogger and this whole YouTube channel is just to make sure I'm accessible to those of you who prefer YouTube. Um, but I, I do like the author Doom community and I'm trying to be a better part of it. So when I saw the uh, titular panel at Balticon 53, I popped my head in and decided to take some notes for you guys. Thanks to Rebecca Davis, Devin Jackson Randall, and JP Bobin, moderated by Melissa Hayden, I've got some validations for a few of the things I do do and a lot of new things to try out, plus some tips on that whole monetization thing that I don't think will ever be an option for me. First off, the YouTube basics. Step one, how do you even start a YouTube channel? Many of you out there watching me are author tubers, but I know not all of you are. And some of you are like, how do you even get started on YouTube? Step one, have a Gmail account. It's that easy. Google owns YouTube. And if you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube account, but you might want a separate email um, uh, for your YouTube channel. Why? Why would you want a separate channel? Step one, it prevents hackers or trolls from easily interfering with your day-to-day -day life. You're not going to be getting as much spam email and, you know, this way you can find important emails um, that actually relate to your day-to-day -day life until author tube and YouTube take over your life, but that's a different issue. Step two, it helps with branding. So all this stuff related to this email address and this YouTube are all related to whatever you decide to blog about. And three, because you can't keep your subscriptions entirely private from the person you're subscribing to. Not all YouTube channels that you might want to subscribe to are likely to be on brand and you might have comments that you don't necessarily want to be associated with your YouTuber personality. Not that I recommend a different personality, I just recommend channeling certain aspects of your personality into your YouTube channel, but that that's for later. So let's, let's go back to this. Can't keep your um, subscriptions private. How private can your activity be? First off, you can hide or show a lot of things from your feed, um, but on individual channels or videos that you've subscribed to, it still has your name attached to, you know, your comment. So even if they can't find it on your feed, if they look closely, they can find your comments on other videos um, and likes and subscriptions, that sort of thing. Most subscriptions are hidden, but usually the person who is being subscribed to knows the names. Next up, why might you want any of this stuff public? Um, well, just like with blogging, a good comment on another user's vlog can drive traffic back to your channel. Plus, people like to support people who support them. The reciprocal nature of YouTube can be strong, especially among smaller YouTubers um, who are just trying to support each other and get started and, you know, make friends because some of us are in this for, you know, the money, but some of us are in there just to, to find new people to hang out with and talk about writing with. Um, so let's talk about the rules of YouTube. Before you start putting everything out there, you gotta know the rules. First up, the hard stuff, the legal stuff, copyright infringement. So copyright infringement is mostly the reports where they charge you with this or whatever, um, is mostly automated. A single report of infringement um, from a person just clicking it is a lot less weighty. So thank you trolls for that. Um, that obviously can be a detriment or um, a good thing depending on how many trolls hit your channel. So far I don't really have any trolls so yay thank you everybody for being supportive followers. I love that my followers are great um, even if there's only a couple of you. 
So secondly, um, when it comes to copyright infringement, just because your video has been up for a while doesn't mean it can't suddenly come back to bite you. Um, and a copyright infringement can result in your video getting removed for sharing like a picture or a short clip from um, other media. Um, typically, if you're on the up and up, you can successfully argue and get the infraction removed from your account that your use of the video or the clip or whatever was fair use, parody, or for educational purposes. If you can't argue that, maybe you shouldn't use it. Um, to uh, thirdly, to avoid charges, video clips from movies and that sort of and TV and whatever need to be a small percentage of your video itself, and it needs to be a small percentage of the source material. Um, and finally, the big warning: if you get three strikes, three copyright infringements in one year, I'm not sure if it's a calendar year or a rolling year, but um, your site gets deleted. So if you like to play fast and loose with that, I recommend keeping copies of your videos offline. So once that clears, you can re-upload your videos to a different site, um, hopefully without the copyright infringement stuff. So yeah. Um, why are people so picky about copyright? Um, well, it's sometimes forced upon them from uh, legal rights. You know, you're, if you're not making any money off it, it doesn't even make sense. But if a property does not protect their copyright material, then it can enter into common use and their copyright holds no weight whatsoever. That's why Xerox and Kleenex are basically household names no matter what brand you're actually buying. Um, so people can be really picky about copyright, especially if they don't, aren't as familiar with fair use and um, parody use uh, legalities. Um, and if your channel is big enough to be monetized, fair use goes down significantly and there are a lot more restrictions to what you can share from other sources. So be sure to look that up before sharing anything if you get to the monetized level. Um, which brings us into how does somebody monetize their YouTube channel? It's not something I've ever thought was going to be a problem for me or even an option really. But for some of you out there, that's clearly something that you're hoping and working your way towards. So I took notes and here they are. So caveat, the rules are always changing. So what's true right now might not be true in two months. So the big things, currently for YouTube, your video can get monetized if you have over 1,000 subscribers um, and over 4,000 hours of watch time in the last year. I think it's watch time and not um, percentage of videos watched, etc. And you get no payout until you hit 100 bucks. So if you're making pennies on a, each video, then it's going to be a while. Um, so if your content is tagged with a yellow dollar sign, it means that some ads may not be appropriate for this video. And in other words, you get fewer ads and a little less money. So um, what uh, the panelist said is that some keywords, which are not listed anywhere you can look up, can lead to less visibility and fewer ads. Experience has shown um, the YouTube guests that corpse is one of those words. So you probably don't want to include it in the description or the title. Um, so experiment with different titles and see what you can be found. So once you have those huge numbers of viewers and hours watched and whatever, how do you monetize this post? Well, in your YouTube Creator Studio, there's gonna be a monetization tab, apparently. I haven't seen it, I can't screenshot it for you because I'm not monetized. But um, you go there and you get to select where in your video the ad is gonna be. 
you can either have it as like a preview before your video, mid video as that 30 second unskippable obnoxiousness, the ads can be at the end, or little distracting pop-ups that don't actually hopefully take away. It's hopefully not like the big thing that takes over the bottom half of the screen. I don't know precisely. Um, so anyway, that's uh, one thing you can customize though, is where in your video the ads show up. Next up, where do these ads show up from? By the time you have 20 to 30,000 followers, apparently you'll start getting propositioned, although it might not be the ads you want. From what I hear these days, it usually starts off with Russian ads and mobile phone games. So if you know, a mobile phone game that's on topic for you pops up, it might be a good bet. But um, make sure that, well, I'll talk about that later. So where do YouTubers make their money? Is this on this huge monetization thing? No, no, monetization can get you money. Definitely it can get you money. Um, but that's not where the salary level YouTubers get paid, apparently. Um, sponsorships is where it's at. After you have about 70,000, 70,000 followers, um, apparently sponsorship offers will be just coming at you. So make sure you pick something that matches your brand and is not something you're embarrassed to tie your name to. A couple quick bucks if you, if your followers get the feeling that you've sold out might not be worth it. And if everything turns into ads, you're going to lose followers and thus lose your sponsorships. So make sure that you're only supporting things that you believe in and, you know, maintain your integrity or, or be a complete sellout. I mean, this is your YouTube channel. You do you. So how do you find this sponsorship? Well, you wait for them to come to you typically, unless you have a great pitch for a company that seems to you to be an excellent match for your channel, like a sports person and a drink. I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe for some of you author tubers, it would be people who make custom uh, hand bound journals. Uh, I know, I know you're out there collecting them for your bullet journal. I know. So, um, going back to that whole, don't accept a sponsor you don't believe in. Um, once you do have a sponsorship offer, uh, the recommended way to handle a sponsorship is apparently through an agency like, um, I think they said socialbluebook.com. Check it out. Um, typically when you have a sponsorship offer, you will have a contract and a due date with like two business days for you to approve their ad. And the contract is typically in terms of you need to have X number of views of their ad in Y number days, or you have to show their ad again until they get that number of views, which makes sense to me. I mean, they're, they're paying for eyes and space. So you give them space until they get the number of eyes they're looking for. So, um, as anyone who's trying to monetize on YouTube knows YouTube is a hustle. Even if you're not monetizing, monetizing it. Um, it's, it's a hustle to get viewers. It's a hustle to reach out. It's, it's a hustle, hustle world. Um, and so, uh, other ways that you can make money, um, without this whole sponsorship or monetization is merchandise or Patreon. Um, people have found success with both of those. Just make sure that you have the time and the bandwidth to um, fulfill the orders or, um, make the additional content for that Patreon, which is why I've kind of shied away from it. But Hey, if you're interested in a Morgan Hazelwood Patreon, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll consider it. Um, so let's go back to this whole YouTube thing, not just the hustle. Um, YouTube is hopefully not just shouting into the void. You want to have something to offer. You want to have a theme so that subscribers, subscribers know what to expect. Um, that all important. If you don't meet expectations, you're going to lose followers and you're going to get downvoted. Just like publishing a book. 
if um, the book doesn't match the cover and the uh, blurb text, it's going to find really nasty reviews and get um, it's going to make it hard to sell. So when you have a YouTube channel, you a need to have a personality. People watch videos because of the person more than the information. They can probably get the information elsewhere, either in blog format or another author tuber or YouTuber, whatever your genre is. Um, but they watch you because of what you say and how you present it. At least I hope you do. Hi. Um, secondly, building on this, you need to entertain the audience and have energy if you're just sitting there reading your script, blah, 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 blah. They're, they're probably gonna get bored and wander off and not really subscribe. Feel free to subscribe. Um, <laughs> so, and thirdly, invest in a decent microphone. Um, Audacity is a free site that lets you easily edit um, audio that I haven't really played with that much, just a little. Um, because I suck at video editing. I promise next time I have a down weekend, I will look into it. I haven't had a down weekend in like two years though, so don't hold your breath. Hopefully soon though. It, it is on, on my to-do list. I haven't forgotten that I need to learn how to do video, video editing, preferably in under two hours because I usually film these videos right after writing my blog post the night before my blog goes up and I, I put it straight up. I, I make like a little screenshots. So you like see the title and then you click it and what you see is what you get. Sometimes I do two to five takes, but you, you're usually getting the raw unedited Morgan, which should be worth something, right? Um, yeah. Thank you for sitting through my babbles. Um, so, uh, once you have a YouTube channel, you're probably going to want to make sure that your area is nice and friendly and welcoming or hostile. I mean, you do you. But for me, um, I like to manage the comments on your posts. Apparently, you can ban certain words and also you can shadow ban, which means that the user can see their content but nobody else can, so trolls are just shut down without being antagonistic towards them, hopefully. Um, another way to be part of the YouTube community is to watch and comment on other people's videos, as I said earlier, especially in your niche. A, your videos will probably appeal to their audience because they're looking for stuff like what you have. Um, you can see what other people are doing in your niche and you can see what's overdone and what's not covered. And if you're posting on the topic, you're probably interested in it. Just maybe, just a little smidgen. Okay, caveat, do not spam comments. Nice post, check out my site. Our obvious link spam um, and won't get you far. You really want to interact with people and say stuff about particular things they said in the video rather than just, oh, you're so sweet. Um, that doesn't mean that you actually watch the video all the way through and they can usually tell. So in summary, clearly this is a high level conceptual approach to YouTube where to start the big copyright worries. Some of the details about how monetization works from someone who's not actually there and community expectations. Is there anything the panelists missed? Anything I wrote wrong or got mixed up in my notes? And is there anything you would like to share about your approach to YouTube? And that's all for today. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button and share it with all your friends. It goes a long way towards helping people find me. And I'll be back again next Monday with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.